Hey, my name's Mark from GCO Cheetah, and I'm here today with Practical Machinist to look at how we can really speed up our G-code programming by using something called a boilerplate. So this is a technique I came across when learning different programming languages, such as Python and JavaScript. And quite often in these programming languages, we repeat using the same code over and over. To save us writing out every time, we do something that's called a boilerplate, where we keep a collection of these codes so we can just copy and paste. So a boilerplate code is a selection of code that is repeated in multiple places with little to no variation. So that's the description when we talk about programming languages such as JavaScript. So how can we use that when we're programming G-code? Well, let's start off by taking a look at a basic tapping sequence that we would use on a CNC lathe. So here's an example program of what a tapping sequence may look like. Now, remember this may be different on your machine depending on the M codes and G codes that your machine uses. So with this basic tapping sequence here, it would work for almost any part that we are tapping on the center line. The bulk of this code would remain the same and we would only have to change a few different things to make it work for any part. So we might need to change the tool position. Now, if we keep our tools in a standard crib in the same place every time, we would not even need to change this. But if we're using a tap in a different position each time we do a setup, we need to add the position of the tool and the offset position. So we would need to change this feature here. And the other thing we would need to change is the tapping sequence itself, the depth of the thread and the pitch and maybe the speed so it ties in with the diameter of the tap. Everything else in a tapping sequence remains the same. We have our safe rapid distance to the beginning of the job, turning the coolant on and off. The rapid distance once we've finished tapping our part and then the sequence where we go back home to the tool change position, stop the spindle and maybe an optional stop. So everything else in this sequence remains the same for all parts, apart from our tool position in the turret and the actual G84 tapping sequence line. So because of this, we can make a separate program up in our CNC machine with a collection of these sequences. So we just need to copy and paste into our main program every time we come across a tapping sequence, and then just edit these few values. So this saves us typing out in the machine controls this whole sequence each time we come to do some center line tapping. Now, not all machines allow us to copy and paste. So what we can do is we can build a program full of collections of these sequences, and then load that up as a base program to edit and delete the parts that we do not need. And by using this technique, we really speed up how quickly we can program a part. Because we're not writing a program from scratch each time, we're just editing a pre-made program and removing sequences that we do not need. Now we can't do this for every sequence in a CNC lathe, and we're using a CNC lathe here as an example, but we can do it with most sequences. So we can, program the header before and then just edit the header to suit our new part. And we can also have the basics of a roughing cycle laid out. So all we need to do is change the subroutine for the dimensions of the parts in the profile and everything else in the roughing cycle sequence would remain the same. Our finishing cycle, very similar. And the finishing cycle where we're calling upon a G70 to call upon the subroutine we use during our roughing cycle we sometimes don't even need to change anything on the finishing cycle. We can use this for center drilling our parts, drilling cycles and tapping cycles as we've just seen and also grooving cycles. And when it comes to boring, we may need to add a lot more detail to it, but we can still have the safety line, the tool call and the go home sequence pre-made ready to go. So we just need to give the dimensions of the bore and write that part of the program. And of course, this would also work for Riemann operations, and we can use it when we're doing cross-axis drilling and cross-axis tapping if our machine is capable of those processes. Now, when it comes to milling, 
We need to edit the size of the flats and the distances, so it's a little bit more involved, but we can also have a basic milling cycle for two flats and also a milling cycle for a hexagon. And then we can just pop in and edit the parts that we need. And if you want to get really flash, we can write uh, milling for hexagons using variables. So we can just edit the variables to give us the correct across flats size. And when it comes to sub spindle transfer, when we're taking a part from the main spindle and placing it into the sub spindle with a passing off operation, this is generally always the same. We just need to add the rapid distance to where the sub spindle comes over to make sure it doesn't collide with the part in the main spindle. So again, we can write the majority of our sub spindle transfer and then just copy and paste it into our main program. And if we're not using a sub spindle transfer to part off, we would just need a passing off sequence that we would edit the diameter where it wraps into so we don't collide with the part and also the position of the z axis to give us our length of our part. So by making a boilerplate program that includes all these features and say for example we're making a job without a grooving cycle we would just delete the grooving cycle section so we would have an outline of a program all ready to go then we can just edit it to make our part. And this also doubles up as quite a safe way of programming because we know these sections and these sequences work. So we can be more confident that we've not got any mistakes within our program because the majority of it we've used before and we know it's correct. Now, when we have a program saved in our machine, that is just collections of different sequences that we can use. We do not want to run this program because it's not designed that way. It's designed to use each sequence separately and not as a whole. So we need to ensure that no one tries to run this program in our machine. So I would advise locking the program off if possible or adding MOO and an operator's note at the very beginning saying, please do not run this program. So this ensures the safety of our machine because we don't want this program to run in its entirety. We're just looking at a selection of sequences that we can copy and paste and edit to speed up our G-code programming. So if your machine has a copy and paste feature and we can easily copy sections of code into our working program, then this is the ideal situation to use boilerplate code. If it does not, we can duplicate the whole program, change the program number, and then remove the parts we don't need as we're editing. So by using this technique, we can really speed up how fast we can write G-code and we can leave the guys that's programming CAD CAM way behind because we can get our programs out quickly and be running while they're still building their model. So if you want to learn more tips about programming with G-code, pop over to my website at gcodetutor.com and you can also follow me on pretty much most social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest under the same name, G-code Tutor. So my name's Mark, thank you for listening, and I hope Boilerplate Code really helps speed up your productivity.